In this video, we're going to look at how to convert a block diagram to a signal flow graph. Before we get started, I just want to mention explicitly that for our block diagrams and later our signal flow graphs, all of our signals and systems are explicitly a function of S. I've just not written it to sort of save time and space. So for example, this R over here is really R of S. Our G1 is really G1 of S. Um, so just keep that in mind as I'm going through this. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to identify where our signals are in the system. So basically our signals are going to be changing anywhere we're adding things together or going through a block. So for instance, we can call this signal here between our first summing junction and G1, our signal V1. On the other side of G1, we now have a different signal, which we can call V2. On the other side of that summing junction, we have a signal V3. On the other side of G2, we have a signal V4. On the other side of this rightmost summing junction, we have V5. Um, on the right side of G, we already have a signal defined as C, so that's our output. Now sort of going through our feedback loops, coming back through our H1, we can call the signal on the other side of H1 V6. So of course, over on this side, we've already labeled this signal as V4. Um, on the other side of our H2, we can call this V7. And finally, on the other side of our H3, we can call this signal V8. So that's sort of our first step is we want to identify these signals. Now, once we've identified these signals, what we can do is we can draw nodes that represent them. So let's draw nodes representing signals. Because remember in our signal flow graphs, our signals are represented by nodes and our blocks are gonna become branches. So draw nodes representing signals. And then what we're going to do is just connect with branches representing the various systems. So sort of bear with me here as I'm gonna to try to do this in real time just because I think that's more instructive as opposed to having a, a sort of pre-made video. So I'm sort of gonna look at this and say, you know, I've got a signal R, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and C. So I've got seven signals across the top. So I'm gonna put sort of seven little nodes across my top line here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, we know that we're gonna have our signal R and our signal C sort of on the extreme sides. So now let's look at our other three signals that we have not considered. And those are gonna be the bottom ones in our feedback loop. So we see our V6, which we know roughly is gonna be kind of below V1 and V2. We have our V7, which is gonna be kind of below V3 and V4. And then finally we have V8, which is gonna be sort of below V5 and uh, RC. So I've not labeled all of these just yet, but I guess let's go ahead and do that for clarity. So I can label this as my signal V1. This is my signal V2, V3, V4, V5. And let me sort of thinking ahead, draw that a little to the side. And so I had said I want to put my node for V6 a little below one and two. So I can come and put that maybe right about here. Um, our node for V7 is between three and four. So let me put that right here. And then finally for node signal eight, rather that's below V5 and C. So let me finish labeling these then. So this is going to be our V6. This is going to be our V7. And this is going to be our V8. All right. So first step is done. So we've drawn our nodes indicating our signals. Now what we want to do is connect with branches. So connect with branches, which represent the systems. So those are our blocks in our block diagram above. So for instance, it's pretty easy to see between V1 and V2, of course, we just go through our G1 block. So we just come down here and we say from V1 to V2, we have this, which is just G1. Um, we also have this R, which is coming into V1. Uh, note that it's being added, so it's just going to be multiplied by negative one. So we just have something that looks like this, and our gain on that is just going to be one. Uh, so we kind of keep doing the same thing. So between three and four, 
we see we have just G2. And so I realize I've skipped over a part there. So let's go back to our connection between two and three. So our signal two is being added to the sum injunction. So signal two is just coming over here into block three. So we have this guy here, which is being multiplied by uh, just one. And then from V3 to V4, I kind of got ahead of myself. That one's gonna be G2. Going from four to five, again, four is just coming through this sum injunction being added. So we're just gonna have V4 coming into V5. So that's gonna be a gain of one. All right. And then finally going from five to C, we have a gain of G3, or we have a system that's being multiplied uh, with a transfer function G3. Okay, so that's sort of my straight across path. Now I've got our feedback loop and our parallel connection to deal with. So let's look at this parallel connection up here on the top. So we notice from V3, we're going to V5, and again, V3 is being added to that sum injunction. So that's just going to be multiplied by one. So I can now have a signal coming from, or a branch, coming from signal V3 to signal V5 in this direction. And again, that's just a one there. So now for our feedback paths. So we note that to go from, so starting over here, I guess let's, yeah, let's start here. This is gonna be our easiest one. Uh, so we have signal C coming in here. We multiply that by our H3 and then we're at signal V8. So coming down here, we can say to get from C to V8, we have to multiply by H3. And then we see that our V8 is going into signal five and it's being subtracted at this sum injunction. So we wanna have a gain or a multiplying factor of negative one. So V8 is being added to V5 and that is a negative one. So similar ideas for our other two feedback loops. So we see to get from V4, which is right here, to V7, we just multiply by H2. So from V4 to V7, we multiply by H2. And then from V7, that goes into V3, but again, we have, that's being subtracted from our sum injunction. So we just have a gain of negative one for this branch here. All right, and then finally, for our feedback loop with H1, on one side we have V4, so to go from V4 to V6, we multiply by H1. So we have to come from V4 over here and multiply by H6, and that's going to get us our V6 signal. And then our V6 is being subtracted to combine and create V1. So again, subtraction at that sum injunction means we're going to have a negative one here. Okay, so it's a little bit messy, uh, a little messier than it is in the notes, but that gives you at least the basic idea of how to create our signal flow graph. And now we see what a signal flow graph looks like for a little more complicated system than what we saw in the previous video. We can actually simplify this a little bit further by removing signals with one branch in and one branch out. So we can simplify by removing signals with one branch in, one branch out. And so we see in, in the signal flow graph above, essentially that's going to be all of our, our feedback loops as well as our V2. So that's going to be V2, V6, V7, and V8. So for instance, if we want, we can come up here and we can say this V2 only has one thing in, one thing out. So we can just go ahead and connect that. And then this is just G1 times one. So that whole thing there is just G1. We can do a similar thing in those three feedback loops. So of course, for our V6, we can get rid of the V6 signal and we can say going from V4 to um, V1, now we don't have negative one H6, but we just have negative one times H6, so negative H6. Um, and sorry, I don't know why I labeled that as H6, that should be H1. I was getting my V6 and H1 mixed up, I think. 
Um, same thing with our V7. So we can come in here and we can get rid of this. Our V7, the negative one is going to combine with our H2 to get negative H2. And then finally, we can get rid of our V8 and we can connect C directly to V5 and change that H3 to negative H3. Um, so that just shows how we can simplify that a little bit. Um, we don't necessarily need to, but as we're gonna see, that can make things a little bit easier.